All right, so the moment about point O, which is a vector, is equal to R cross F. This order matters. If you cross F, um, F cross R, you actually end up, you'll introduce a negative sign just like you'd introduce if you're using a left-hand rule. Okay, so the order of these cross products um, always matter. And once again, I think I already wrote this um, definition. Is this R is your moment arm going from a point of interest to the line of action um, of that force? All right. And so in taking a look at two vectors, let's say that we have vector A and vector B. So we can say that A cross B algebraically equals the length of A times the length of B times now the sine of the angle between them, so the sine of this angle theta, times one more thing. And that one more thing I'm going to call u hat, because now we know the cross products give us a vector result and not a scalar result. And so that u hat I could draw it here is this vector that's perpendicular to the plane of both A and B. So I'll write that out in words, that U hat is defined as a unit vector perpendicular to plane formed by A and B with its direction from the right hand rule. So if the direction always comes from the right-hand rule, and so we're talking about, say, A crossed here into B, and then our thumb comes out from the right-hand rule, if we took B cross into A, our thumb goes the other direction, right? And so we could write here that A crossed with B is equal to the negative of B cross A. Once again, the order matters. And so if you're using the R's and F's, you want to make sure you always have your R first crossed into uh, your F. And so we could say that uh, the cross product is not commutative, so the order matters. Uh, next up, if we have a constant small c times our A cross B, we can then multiply that small c times either vector. So we could have c times vector a crossed with b or um, a vector crossed with c times b. And those are all equal. So it doesn't matter kind of where we put in that um, scalar term. So this little c is just a little uh, scalar. And that means that it is, the cross product is associative. And fundamentally, you could think about it in what you guys have learned about vectors is if we think about, say, um, C being the magnitude of a force, so 200 newtons, and say A was the unit vector along the direction of that force, and then, uh, actually, let me turn it around, that C was a, uh, Say 200 newtons, A was a position vector between some point and the line of action of a force, and then B was a unit vector along the line of the force that you could multiply in that 200. Um, you could take your cross product first with that R vector and that unit vector, or you could multiply the 200 times your R vector, which is kind of weird, but mathematically it would still work. Or you could create your full force vector 
and then you know, cross that your, your R vector with that full force vector. N numerically, you get the same answers. The middle one would be strange because you'd be multiplying, like I said, this like force times a distance crossed with a unit vector, but in the end, mathematically, you get the same answer. And then the last um, property is that if we have uh, a distribution of, so A vector crossed with the sum now of B plus, say, D. I'm sorry this screen jitters. There's something very strange about my hands and these screens that they, um, I have too much energy, I think, and I think that my hands are the pen point or something, but. Uh, I can take and I can distribute this out, and this could be A crossed with B, and I can add that to A crossed with D. Those are all vector terms there. And this is the distributive property. And this is the one that we'll use, um, we'll get into the topic in section 4.4. But I talked about that either you can take you know, the full vectors and take the cross products, or you can break them into their components, the x components cross into the y components, and the uh, y components cross into the x components. That's this idea right here. So we can break things apart, sum the pieces back together, and the pieces are equal to the same thing as the um, uh, kind of the more your resultant, your total version. All right. So continuing on now with how we relate the components here. So looking at the cross products of unit vectors. All right, so if we said that a dot product will always find the amount of one vector that's parallel to the other, and now a cross product is going to find the amount of one vector perpendicular to another. If we cross i hat and i hat, how much of i hat is perpendicular to i hat? Zero, right? None of it. And mathematically, we can back that up because this is going to be the length of i hat, which is one, times the length of i hat, which is one, times the sine of the angle between them. And the sine of the angle between them is zero. And the sine of zero is zero. And then this technically will be um, in a u hat direction, but if it's a zero length vector, it doesn't matter what direction it's going in because it, it has no length, okay? So um, this is equal to zero. And then if we take i hat crossed with j hat, once again, to write this out, length of i is one, length of j hat is 1, the sine of 90 now is equal to 1. And this will be in the um, direction perpendicular to the plane formed by those. So it works out that i hat cross j hat, I'll try it over here, is k hat. Okay, so uh, if you have a hard time remembering your unit vector cross products. I'll give you a little tool to help you out with that. So if you write them in this order, so around in a circle, i hat, j hat, k hat, as you cross the terms in this direction here, these will all be put that positive inside. So these will be positive, positive, positive. And then back in the opposite direction, so say you're coming this direction, this would be a negative term. This would be a negative term. This would be a negative term. So what I'm saying there is that if we have, here's my magic ink, if we're crossing i hat into j hat, we're going in that positive direction, so that would give me a positive k hat. Whereas if we took j hat crossed into i hat, we're going in the negative direction, it would give me a negative k hat. Okay, so it just gives you basically the sign. It's never, there's no magic, as, you know, there's only three unit vectors there, i hat, j hat, and k hat. And so you know that if you cross a k into a j, you're going to get an i, but the question always is, is what sign? Okay, and so this really just helps you out with what sign that you'll find. 
And so we can use that, or we can use the, the, the right-hand rule, right? This is really just re also representing if we have a i hat, j hat, and k hat coming out of the board. Oh, sorry, magic ink. You can also do the right-hand rule. Like I said, it's just a, a graphical notation of the right-hand rule. And so we already said above here that i hat crossed with i hat is 0. i hat crossed with j hat is k hat. And then i hat crossed with k hat. Taking a look at that one. So i hat crossed into k hat. We're going in the negative direction. will be a negative j hat. Then my j hat column here, j hat cross with i hat, gives me a negative k hat. j hat crossed with itself is 0. And then j hat crossed with i hat gives me a positive i hat. Sorry, j hat crossed with k hat. Sorry about that. j hat crossed with k hat gives me a positive i hat. And then my k column, k crossed with i is a j. k crossed with j is a negative i. And then k crossed with itself equals 0. So a little bit more thought and kind of operations going on, obviously, with cross products and dot products. Dot products, you just worry about, are they going in the same direction? True, it's 1. False, it's 0, right, with those, with those unit vectors. Um, what mathematical tool do we have to take cross products? A calculator. And what, op what operator in your calculator do you use to take those cross products? A matrix. So a matrix is the representation of the vector. What do you do with the matrix? Take a determinant of the matrix. And in taking a determinant of the matrix, it will actually do all of these cross products for you. That's the cool part about it, is that you don't have to be doing them by hand. It will actually compute all of those cross products um, for you. So let's go ahead and um, look at determinants. And so we're going to take a look at, say, the moment about some arbitrary point O or some point in space O. And that's going to equal R cross F. I could have used A and B or whatever else on this, but since we're doing most of our cross products with uh, moments, let's go ahead and get in that notation. So this, written as a vector, would equal I hat, J hat, K hat, and then Rx ry and rz, and then fx and fy and fz. Now, what are, so we're talking about the answer is going to be either vector or scalar. What are these terms, say, in the R row right there? Are those vectors or scalar components? Scalar components, right? And you can take a look at them and say there's not an arrow above them, there's not a hat above them, right? It's just a scalar value. What about for the forces? Are those vector, um, is, are those vector terms or scalar components? Scalar components. What about in the top up here? Those are vectors, okay? And those vectors in the top of this matrix are the reason that we end up with a vector out of the determinant, okay? All a determinant does is a determinant ends up looking at, so I'm going to write, I know there's different ways you can do determinants. I'm going to use the diagonal um, notation. So if I repeat the first two columns, oops, stupid, sorry, um, silly ink, uh, Rx, Ry, Fx, Fy. I like this notation because it's a very visual notation of where all these terms come from. It also shows how the, the right-hand rule um, comes through this. And so thinking now about 
the, the, the values that come out of this determinant, fundamentally we can just draw some diagonals through here, and all of these green diagonals yield positive cross products from the right-hand rule. Okay, so what I'm saying there is, is that if you take a vector in the y direction crossed into a vector in the z direction, you will end up with a positive i hat. Okay, so that's doing the right-hand rule for you simply by looking at these um, diagonals. Now, if we come back in the opposite direction and say we look here at a uh, j hat or a y direction uh, position vector crossed into um, an x direction force, that will give us a negative k hat. And so I'll use a red here coming back on the opposite diagonal. Now this gives you exactly the same terms. I know a lot of you use that, you know, if you're looking at, I'll use my disappearing ink, and I'll try to remember to turn it off. But a lot of you say, well, if I'm looking at I hat right here, I know that I can multiply these two and subtract those two right there. Right? That's often kind of operationally what you do. Um, this is just to kind of point out how the cross product shows up in these, that it's really just looking at that this is perpendicular to this, and when I take those two terms, cross product, I end up with a positive I. Okay, and so we could write all these terms out. Uh, just draw, pick my green here again. So the positive terms, we could say that our moment, that's a funky pen. That one. Okay, so my moment is equal to ry times fz in the i hat plus rz times fx in the j hat plus rx times fy in the k hat. Okay, that's my three uh, positive diagonals. And coming back on my negative diagonals, uh, minus a ry times fx in the k hat, minus a rz times fy in the, oops, so that's the i hat there, in the i hat, and then minus a rx times fz uh, in the j hat. Okay, so whatever mathematical tool you want to use to find determinants, obviously I support your use of your calculators, and so if you come up with these vectors and just want to put it in your calculator and say, hey, take the determinant, take the cross product of these two vectors, uh, I'm totally fine with that. Um, but I did want you to recognize that if you don't have um, unit vectors here in the top, or basically if you don't have vectors inside of this matrix, you will not come out of this determinant with a vector. Okay, because we'll actually use a determinant here uh, in another couple sections. It will have all scalar values inside that determinant. And when you take that determinant of all scalar values, you just get a scalar value out. Okay, because all a determinant does is just looking at these diagonals. It doesn't automatically give you a vector. I know that you use it a lot for cross products and you get this vector out. But just kind of pointing out the difference between, um, you know, what is a determinant and what is a cross product. The determinant is a tool we use for cross products of certain matrix, matrices. And I realize that not all of you take determinants in this way. Um, but I like this way because it's very evident where the cross products come from. It's very evident what's positive, what's negative. Um, if you use the technique where you, you, know, you simply write this out as i hat, j hat, k hat, rx, ry, rz, fx, fy, and fz, when you're looking at the j hat term, just make sure you don't make a negative sign error. Like it's probably the most common kind of small math error that I see, right? In that j hat term, you're going to multiply this times this, and that's going to be your negative term. I should have circled those in red. So this times this is your negative term, and then this times this is your positive term. And it's actually a flip of the order from the other ones. Um, you don't have to remember that if you do these diagonals. Of course, you don't have to remember it at all if you put it in your calculator. You're welcome to do all the determinants in your calculator if you want to. Um, what I want to see if you do that, I want to see this vector. I want to see here's the vector I put in, here's the answer that I got out. That's great.